Here we go. Thanks for this opportunity. And um, the Wellcome Trust became a partner of the GTFCC four years ago <laughs> with, with a commitment to support the ending cholera roadmap to 2030. As a research funder, Wellcome recognized the importance of research to help us accelerate progress on cholera control. Oh, I can hear someone speaking. Yeah. Um, and we want to do this faster, better, and at lower cost. But the question remained as to what research is most needed to help countries meet the goals of the Ending Cholera Roadmap to 2030. We heard from members of the working groups that a research agenda would be helpful to address this question. And so we responded to these requests and supported the GTFCC to put together a research agenda. Um, and this, resulted in the publication of the Cholera Roadmap Research Agenda in January, which can be found online at the GTFCC website. And this is meant to be a, a companion or supporting document to the roadmap that focuses specifically on research. Um, in the last update at the last annual meeting, we went over the methodology that was used to put together the roadmap. Um, this was first identifying the research questions and we identified 93 different research questions that were um, related to the roadmap. And then we also decided the criteria by which the research questions could be uh, prioritized, which included the impact, implementability, relevancy, sustainability, and answerability. And we also decided the context, which was um, whether it would have impact between now and 2030. Um, so this was done through uh, interviews and surveys. And the next step was to score and prioritize those 93 uh, research questions and then analyze them and put it together written up in the research agenda uh, document. Um, so this, this work was undertaken, the document is now out and it is an important achievement in itself. But what really matters now is um, whether it is implemented and acted upon. And so that involves advocacy, which will lead to action, and then also making sure that we monitor and evaluate whether or not these uh, prioritized research questions have been addressed. So today I will go over some of the key findings of the research agenda, and the di then discuss what would, is still needed to implement the research agenda. But first I want to acknowledge all of the groups that were involved in making the research agenda happen. And so I want to thank the, the steering committee for the Ro Re Cholera Roadmap Research Agenda. This was a group of experts that oversaw the development of the research agenda. I also want to thank MM Global Health uh, Consultants who did the work of conducting the surveys and interviews and analyzing and putting together the research agenda. Also the Secretariat and the GTFCC for co close collaboration and Global Health Visions for help with the communications during the launch and continued advocacy. And also Fondation Merieu for supporting on the development of the research tracker, which I'll talk about at the end. Um, but most importantly, I want to thank all of the contributors to the research agenda and the 177 people that responded to the different stages and surveys that put together the research agenda. I, I think the high level of engagement for this work is a testament to the vitality of the cholera research community and um, beyond, and we're very grateful for that. Uh, the respondents came from a wide range of different geographies, expertise, and jo job functions, and this show, reflects the collective wisdom of the cholera community, and we were able to capture the research needs of cholera affected countries. So I have a map that shows the different places where the respondents were from, as well as a breakdown by region expertise and organization type of the different respondents. And the main output of the research agenda setting process was this list of the top 20 research priorities. So most of these centered around using existing tools most effectively as part of implementation research. And it spanned all different types and pillars of cholera research. Um, 
There were also several different cross-cutting research questions, uh, which reflects the multi-sectorial response for cholera. And these are highlighted in yellow on the list. I won't go over all of these uh, right now, but I encourage you to go to the website if you haven't seen it already and have a look. Um, we also have them ranked into the top five for each pillar, which you've heard presented by some of the working groups today. And we're happy that um, those have been helpful. Uh, we also chose to highlight some key discovery research priorities. Um, the discovery research we defined as including developing new tools and databases. Uh, these typically have longer time scales to impact, which is why they didn't meet the uh, context that was chosen for the research agenda to have impact by 2030. But nevertheless, these are critical to our ability to eliminate cholera. And the fact that they will take longer to develop means that it's very important to start them now so that we have them available in the future. So these included uh, development of novel and innovative diagnostics, development of new or improved vaccines, and development of a database of uh, global Vibrio cholerae sequences. And now turning uh, from talking about what the research agenda found to what needs to be done now, um, first we'll discuss the need for advocacy. So the goal here is to create awareness, foster understanding and build engagement, um, which ultimately leads to action. So since its launch in January, the research agenda has been downloaded over 200 times. Um, I see that we have nearly 200 people that are coming to this meeting today. So I hope that's a good place to start that all of you have been able to um, read and interact with the research agenda, but we'd really hope that it can go beyond this group and reach further into the global health community. Uh, so the research agenda, it can be used to raise the profile of cholera research and um, because it shows the context of individual projects and how they all fit together to achieve the roadmap goals and demonstrates that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. It also shows that there's a momentum here and there's an importance placed by the, on research by the cholera community. It also provides direction and actionable recommendations of what to start doing and funding now. So we would ask you to please share among your network if possible. I've given a couple of uh, possibilities of how to do this. So for sharing with funders, there's a possibility for researchers to reference the research agenda in their grant applications um, to strengthen their proposal and show its importance. Um, sharing with policymakers and countries that are affected by cholera to raise awareness of the importance of cholera research sharing with NGOs connect, to connect research with implementation goals and um, to share with researchers that might not be part of the GTFCC to recruit them in um, and be part of the color community and doing relevant research. Um, so, so ultimately the most important part of the research agenda is to ensure that it is acted upon and that the prioritized research is carried out and leads to improved color control. For this to happen, a range of stakeholders will need to act. This includes researchers to carry out the research activities that have been prioritized, donors to fund those projects, and national policymakers and program implementers to incorporate research priorities, goals, and findings into their national cholera control plans and operational plans. Um, and the final part of my presentation, I'll be talking about a new project that we've begun with the GTFCC, which is the cholera research tracker. This will be hosted on the GTFCC website and it will be an interactive searchable online platform for ongoing and recently completed cholera research projects. Um, when visitors come to the site, they will be able to search for research projects by the pillar, country or keywords. And then they'll be able to view information about individual projects, including the summary lead investigator collaborating partners and funding source. Um, importantly, I will mention that the tracker will only include funded projects and it won't involve the sharing of confidential data. The purpose of the cholera research tracker is to spread awareness of the breadth of cholera related research 
and to support and foster collaborations because if people know what research is being done where and by whom they can get in touch and um, create those bonds. It can also help to avoid duplication of efforts and help us to analyze the research trends and identify gaps, um, which relates to the research agenda because it'll allow us to monitor progress and which of the prioritized research questions are being fulfilled. Um, so just an update, this is still under development and we thank all of those who have already submitted their projects. We've gotten over 50 so far, which again is a, a great response and we thank you for that. We plan that the research tracker will be launched in July. So uh, please watch out for an email. And um, if you haven't already, please submit any additional projects that you'd like to be included in the tracker. Uh, this website, you can go there and upload your data, well, not your data, the information. Um, it should be going live today or tomorrow. Alternatively, send any feedback, comments, or questions to any of the emails below with the partners that have been involved in this, the GTFCC, Fondation Merieu, and the Wellcome Trust with my colleague, Helen Groves. Um, now I'm going to turn it over to play a demo of the research tracker, and then I'll take any uh, questions or comments afterwards. Thanks. Hello, and thank you for listening to this demonstration of the new GTFCC cholera research tracker. A few things to say before we begin. The version that you're about to see is still in development, and so certain aspects may change between now and the anticipated launch in July. We would really value any feedback you may have after seeing this demonstration, and please send this through to the contact points outlined at the end of the Wellcome Trust presentation. The creation and management of the Cholera Research Tracker has been a collaborative effort between the GTFC Secretariat, the Murray Foundation and the Wellcome Trust, and we particularly like to thank the Murray Foundation for their expertise in the design and development of the online platform. Most importantly, thank you to all the researchers who have contributed projects to the research tracker so far. We're very pleased to say that we currently have 50 research projects in the database, although only a sample of these have been uploaded for the demonstration. So to begin, after the launch, you will be able to find the cholera research tracker under the newly created research tab on the GTFCC website. This will take you to the main page that you see before you now. Here, there is a small introduction and two important links. The first, submit a project, will take you to an online submission form for submitting a research project. This form will be going live immediately after the annual meeting and can be found on the GTFCC website. The other link, contact GTFCC, will direct you to a dedicated email address for any queries or requests relating specifically to the research tracker. As we scroll down, you'll first be able to see an overview which summarizes the number of research projects currently in the database, the number of countries where these projects are or were conducted, and how the research projects align with the different GTFCC pillars. Research projects have been assigned to one or more pillar by the researchers who submitted the information, depending on the subject and area of focus of the research study. Just like a multi-sectoral response, many research projects include more than one type or area of research, and so can be aligned to more than one pillar. As you continue to move down the page, you come to the main interactive searchable view of the cholera research tracker. The default view here is a world map. The green icons represent research projects. And as you zoom in, you can see that the green icons with numbers separate out to show individual research projects. When multiple projects are located in one country, clicking on the icon separates these out even further. Clicking on an individual icon brings up a summary view of that project. A study can be in multiple locations, as it is here, and the map displays a project icon per location, so there may be more icons on the map than projects. More information about a specific project can be found by clicking the View button, which we will return to later. If we now return to the top of the interactive map, you can find three drop-down filters, which will enable you to search and refine the research project shown on the map. This will allow you to filter by pillar, by country, and by project status. Status refers to whether a research project is ongoing or active, or whether it is finished and is therefore marked as complete. 
It is possible to select multiple pillars, which will return all research projects which have been aligned with all the selected pillars. For example, if you select vaccines and WASH, this will return research projects which look at both vaccines and WASH within the same study. It is also possible to select multiple countries, which will bring up all the research projects located in any of the countries selected. The filters also work in combination. So for example, if you wish to look at vaccine related research projects happening in Cameroon that are currently ongoing, you would select the filters like this and view the results on the map. Clicking reset resets both the zoom view and the search and filter criteria. An additional way to search the database is by using this free text search box, which will search for the presence of a specific word. Currently, this is limited to the project title, but we're working to expand it to the entire project entry. So for example, if you type in hotspot, the autocomplete function suggests one project which has hotspot in the title. If you click on this, it will take you to a dedicated project page, or you can click OK to view the map filtered according to this keyword. If you wish to have a copy of the research project information and any search or filtered results, you can click here on download to take you to this dedicated page where you can then download information about the projects in various different formats. It is also possible to view all the research projects and any filtered or search results in a list format rather than a map by clicking view projects as list. Here you can see the same summary information with all multiple projects on the same page. The list format can be sorted according to the start date and end date of the study. And then to return to the map, simply click show projects in map view. When you've identified a particular research project that you'd like to know more about, you can click on the view button to take you to a dedicated project page. Here you'll be able to see who is conducting the research, what organization they're based at, and who is funding the study. You'll also be able to look through a detailed project summary. Optional extras, which may be available for some research projects, include a lay summary, an impact statement, and information about co-investigators and key collaborators. At the bottom of the page, the search algorithm will bring up a list of the most viewed research projects. Clicking view here will take you to another research project, or you can always click back and go to your search results to select one of your choice. At any point, you can click submit a project to go to the online submission form where you will find some guidance about using the form, as well as a space to put in information about the lead researcher and information relating to the research project itself, including a place to upload any resources associated with that research project. Once you have submitted a research project, you will get an automatic acknowledgement email. The project will be reviewed and then uploaded to the database. That brings us to the end of the demonstration. Thank you very much for listening and please direct any questions or feedback you have to the Murray Foundation or the Wellcome Trust contact points. Thank you again to all the researchers you've contributed already, both by submitting research projects and with the many helpful suggestions which have resulted in the user-friendly cholera research tracker you've seen today. And final thanks to Jason Sof and all at the Murray Foundation who have made this possible. Thank you for listening.